Good evening, everybody. With energy prices continuing to get higher and higher, more and more people seem to be looking into the aspect of solar power and battery backup solutions for their home. And one question that seems to come up a lot is, well, what's the return on investment gonna be? And so I wanted to go over my thoughts on the return on investment for the Blue Eddy EP800 with three B500 batteries. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to apologize if you hear the ducks or the chickens because <laughs> they're just making a whole lot of racket out there. And another thing is I'm not a financial expert, so do your own research when it comes to investigating return on investment for your particular scenario. So if you're not familiar with it, the EP800 is a 7.6 kilowatt inverter which has the ability to bring in up to 9,000 watts of PV. And it is powered by the B500 battery. And in my stack, I have three B500 batteries, which gives me just shy of 15 kilowatts of backup power. So when I think of return on investment, there's, there's three things that come to mind. How much does it cost? How are you going to use it? And how are you going to recharge it? So if we look at the aspect of how much does it cost, we're going to jump over to the Blue Eddy website. So with the EP800 and three B500 batteries, the initial cost is $11,999. Now, there's also aspects that you need to consider of wiring, cabling, disconnects, a lot of things that most people tend to forget. And if you have to have an electrician come and help you install this. So we're gonna ballpark those miscellaneous extras at about, let's just round the number to say $1,000. So instead of $11,999, we'd be looking at $12,999. And you can see right here, it talks about the cash price, but then it says after incentives. Well, there is a 30% federal tax credit, which again, I'm not gonna claim that I understand all of how that all works, but they actually have on their website, you can hit see detail, and it's gonna take you to the IRS website, which is gonna give you all the information you need to know about that federal tax credit and how it applies to new solar installations, it, it applies to wiring. It can apply to the installation so you can have a 30% tax credit on your installation of the full system. So if we pull up the calculator on the screen here, let's say we had $12,099 times 0.3, that's $3,899 in tax credit which would reduce your total cost of this system down to $9,099.30. So round numbers, $9,100 would be your, your total end cost for installing this system. So that's the first thing that I, I tend to look at regarding return on investment. So what does it cost? Including the 30% tax credit, about $9,100. And that gets you the inverter, and just shy of 15 kilowatts of backup storage. So the second thing is, how are you planning on using it? These last two areas are going to determine how quickly you can get a return on your investment. There's three different modes that this inverter can be used in. Time of use, backup, and self-consumption. In time of use mode, you can use the logic of this system to run off of battery power when your electric rates are higher. And then when your rates are lower, you can use grid power. That mode is really only beneficial to you if you live in a place 
that has multi-tiered electric rates. And those rates are gonna be a big determination factor of how quickly you recoup your return on your investment. If you use this as purely a backup, so it sits here, fully charged, waiting for the grid to go out. Well, in that case, your return on investment is going to be pretty long because you have no way to recoup your cost unless the power goes out. Think of it kind of like a, a dedicated UPS for your house. Well, that's great. It gives you that insurance that you're going to have power when the grid goes down, but you're not able to recoup that cost nearly as fast as you could because it's just sitting there waiting for the power to go out. The last mode is self-consumption mode, which is the mode that I run this system in. Self-consumption mode means that all the loads are being powered by this system until the batteries on this unit drain down to about 20%, and then it will switch back over to grid. So I am saving all that cost of running those loads off of the grid on a daily basis. And that cost savings translates into a faster return on investment because I'm not having to put that money towards my electric bill. The third factor that I look at in regards to return on investment is how are you charging this system? So you can charge this system by means of the grid or you can charge this system by means of solar power. Actually, if you look right over here, I've got more panels to install because I recharge my system by solar power. In my mind, if you recharge with the grid, and there are several factors that could play into this, but if you recharge with the grid power, you're not really saving yourself any money because you're just pulling the, that same power from the grid at a different time. Now, if you have, again, those time of use rates to where certain times your rates are lower and certain times your rates are higher, you could recharge this from the grid when your rates are lower, and that will give you a smaller cost savings, not as much as you would save if you charged only from solar, but there would be some cost savings there. When you look at charging with solar, really, real estate is gonna be the expensive part because you have to figure out where you're gonna put some of this stuff. You could put it on the roof of your home. You could put it on, in my case, an outbuilding. You could put up a little ground mount. I mean, I picked up a used pallet of Santan solar panels and they were, I think the cost was around $1,000 maybe. So panels are fairly cheap especially if you can get them on sale. So not using the grid to recharge the B500 batteries would significantly decrease that time frame for your return on investment. So if we look at those three aspects of cost, how are you running the system, and how are you charging the system, we can kind of get a ballpark idea of what our return on investment would be. So we're gonna pull up our calculator again, and we're just gonna round it up to $9,100 just to make it easy math. Because <laughs> for those of you that know me, I'm not good at math. So if we can keep this constantly charged with up to that 9,000 watts of solar, so that we're not having to pull from the grid at all, again, these numbers are gonna vary based on your household, but let's just say running this in self-consumption mode, charging only with solar, saves you 100 bucks a month. So 100 bucks a month times 12 months, that's 1,200 bucks a year. So we take 9,100 divided by the $1,200 a year. So that would be a little over seven and a half years to recoup your cost for this system. Now let's say that you're able to save $150 a month. $150 a month times 12 months, $1,800. 9,100 divided by 1,800 gives you little over five years to recoup your cost. So I'm running this system on my barn right now, but let's just say I was running this on my house. So with the system running on my house, I'm able to save about $140 a month based on my budgeted electric bill. So I budget about $220 a month. And my average electric bill right now is 
eh, 60 to $80 a month. So if I normally budget $220 and my bill only costs me 80, so I'm saving $140 a month on my electric bill. And I take $140 a month times 12, 1680 per year. So 9,100 divided by 1680. So just under five and a half years to be able to pay off this system. So years ago, the return on investment just didn't make financial sense because of how high the costs were of these different solar systems. But we have been able to see these costs slowly drop as <laughs> the electric bills are going in the other direction. So now you could easily look at a return on investment of five, six, seven years for a 15 kilowatt battery backup system that gives you the ability to power most of the loads in your home. An argument some people might have is, well, why would I put in a solar system like this when I can just put in a whole home standby generator? Well, I mean, you're still looking at $10,000 plus to install a whole home backup, including installation and wiring. But you also have to look at the maintenance aspect of those whole home generators. Those things have to run, what, once a week, once a month to make sure that they're running properly. Then you have to go through maintenance cycles. And on top of that, you still have to provide a fuel source that you have to pay extra for, whether that's natural gas, whether that's propane. So even in a power outage situation, you're still having to pay for that fuel. Whereas a system like this, if the sun comes out, you can recharge your batteries. But I can't help but think about all those folks that are without power right now in North Carolina, in Florida, from the hurricanes that we've had in the last several weeks. My heart goes out to them. I had friends that they were out of power for over two weeks. I couldn't help but think, boy, if they only had some kind of a solar setup on their home, they could have power when nobody else does. And I've also seen stories of folks in Florida who have backup power when nobody else does. And, and they're just kind of, you know, super thankful that they got this system in before disaster struck. And I completely forgot about this, but Blue Eddy actually gave me a 5% discount code for a purchase of an EP800 with B500 batteries. So even that right there would give you a little bit extra savings to be able to get that return on investment a little bit faster. So as always, I'll leave links to, in the description below regarding the EP800 and the B500 batteries. Take a look for yourself. Run the numbers for yourself and see if you put in this system, what would be your return on investment? And with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, because <laughs> the temps are dropping now, and we'll catch up with you later.